Dear students, welcome to the online lecture on PyMol tutorial for beginners. In this tutorial, you are going to learn about PyMol, the general controls and commands of the PyMol. You will also be able to get yourself familiarized with the mouse controls. We are also going to discuss how to open and save a PDB file. It will be interesting to learn how the proteins and ligands can be represented in different variations. So let's get started. PyMol is a user-sponsored molecular visualization system on an open source foundation maintained and distributed by Schrodinger. PyMol is good for visualizing 3D molecular structures, rendering figures artistically and animating the molecules dynamically. It is helpful in giving light 3D presentation it is also good for sharing interactive visualization and also for exporting geometry. So this is our PyMol tutorial part 1. So let's start. So let's get started by opening a PDB file. So there are several ways to do that. One way to do that is go to file and then click on open and browse your file where you have it on your desktop so you can browse the file from your um, from your uh, folders this is one way to do that uh, there is another way there is uh, there is another way to do that using this command line so you can go to command line and write fetch Space. write the code of the PDB file if you don't know then you can go to PDB and select the code and paste it over here I uh, remember the PDB so I'm writing the fetch space 1us0 uh, so I can just delete it actions delete object so it's deleted now I'm using the other way to do that uh, for that purpose, you need to go to command line and for command line, I'm just writing fetch and then space and then use the uh, PDB ID of the protein uh, that you want to uh, upload. 1US0. Now we have the protein structure with us. Let me tell you some mouse commands as well. So it has some water molecules, the cofactor and the uh, inhibitor as well. So it has some water molecules. If you want to remove the water molecules, you can go to actions. Delete object, delete waters. If you click on delete waters, water molecules are deleted. So you can see the inhibitor and the cofactor NADP positive here. How you can control the mouse buttons? You can, uh, if you just click on the left mouse button and the drag it. You can just rotate the protein by using the, pressing the left mouse button and dragging it. If you want to zoom in and zoom out, you can use the right mouse, press the right, right mouse button and then drag it. So it will zoom in and zoom out. Then you can again use the left mouse button to rotate. You can explore moving around the proteins by using different uh, options for mouse. Uh, if you scroll down the mouse wheel, then you can see that some of the portions of the proteins are clipped. So it depends on what part of the ribbons, what part of the protein backbone you need to show. So if you want to remove some part of the protein, you can clip that using the scrolling the mouse wheel. Okay. Let's say we would like to change the colors of protein. One way is to use the command line and, and the other way is to use the color bar. If you use the command line, you can just write color. So you can both use, you can use the American or UK English color space red. So now the protein color is changed by using the command line. If it's too vibrant and if you want to make it dull, you can use color. You can change the command to color space fire brick. So it's now, it's, it's the color is now dull red. 
Another way is by using mouse in the internal GUI, graphical user interface. So at the very end you see the letter C here which means color. So this is the protein line and this is selection. This is a protein and if you change the color of this protein, if you just click on this C and then you have a number of options, color by element, color by chain, if you just click on chain. First of all, let me ch change the color by magenta. If you, if you just click on magenta, then you have a number of lighter and darker shades. So if I click on this, then the color is like this. And if you just click on cyan, then you have a number of uh, variations here. You can go to oranges, light, so you can have like this. So you can also change the colors by, uh, you have residues in it, so you can change the color by element. So the, uh, the, the NADH, NADB positive and the uh, ligand, the inhibitor in the molecule are uh, colored by their heteroatoms. You can also color by chain, by uh, secondary structure, by uh, representation, either um, lines, takes ribbons. And you can also color by rainbow. If you just click on by rainbow, then the protein color has been changed to standard rainbow color. So let's have a look at the sequence of the proteins. So if you are interested in some specific residues in a protein, then you can color them in a different way. So it's better to color it by color, color, mm, let me just add magenta, light magenta and then color by hat atom, color by element. Okay. So. Now, uh, if we are interested in some specific uh, amino acid residues, then we can also color them differently. So, how we can do that? One way is that if you click on S in the movie control panel, so if you just click on S, it will show up the sequence of the whole protein. So, you can move this bar along to have the amino acid residues number and their sequence. For example, if I am interested in histidine 110, so I have to see histidine 110, 6, 7, this is histidine 110. So if I have randomly or wrongly clicked one residue, so you can just click it again, it will be undone. So, so histidine 110 is in magenta color, it is selected, so, so this Sally means selected selected is histidine 10 and now I'm going to change its color so I'll go to C and then I'll change its color to green so color is green now and I have to find where is this histidine so it's it's here so this histidine I can just zoom in and this histidine is here here you can see that so this is histidine is uh, highlighted in green